Okay, today we get to do classroom practice 71. Before we start, let's remember what is our first question we always ask when we're classifying a sentence. We want to know who or what the sentence is about, right? If it's a person, it's a who, and if it's uh, some other kind of noun, it's a what. So let's read number one and then our, ask our first question. The wild elephant swam across the river. Are we going to say who or what? We're going to say what. And what are they doing? So what swam? Elephants. Subject noun. What is being said about elephants? Elephants swam. Verb. Across has to be a preposition because there's a noun over here. Now, if we didn't have the river, if the sentence ended with a cross, then it would be an adverb, wouldn't it? Because it would tell where they swam. They swam across. Where? Across. It would be an adverb. But can't be an adverb in this sentence because there's a noun over here that has to connect. So across, preposition, across what? River. Object of the preposition. The article adjective. Across the river, prepositional phrase. And now we're at the end of our sentence. We go back to our subject noun and we work our way back towards the beginning. What kind of elephants? Wild. Adjective. The article adjective. Go back to the verb, divide the complete subject from the complete predicate, underline the complete subject once and the complete predicate twice. Make sure your lines are nice and straight and close to the top so you have room to write on the next sentence. Okay? Read number two with me. Ray talked on the phone after dinner. Who talked? Ray. Subject noun. What is being said about Ray? Ray talked. Verb. On preposition. On what? Phone. Object of the preposition. The article adjective. On the phone. Prepositional phrase. After. Preposition. After what? Dinner. Object of the preposition. After dinner, prepositional phrase. Go back to the verb. Divide the complete subject from the complete predicate. Underline the complete subject once and the complete predicate twice. Okay, so that's one of those sentences that had two prepositional phrases. Always more interesting that way. Okay, for our noun chart, it says use sentence number one. So the nouns are what? Elephants and river. So elephants. How is it used? And it's the subject noun. Is it singular or is it plural? It is plural. Common or proper? It's not a name, right? So it has to be common. Okay, the other noun in sentence number one is river. How is it used? What's it say there? OP, object of the preposition. Singular or plural? Singular. Good. There's only one river. And is it common or proper? It's just common. We don't know the name of it, so it just could be any river. Okay, now we have one of these where we're going to put these words in order to make a sentence that makes sense. Okay, so we always want to start with the subject noun. So which one of these words could be a subject noun? Ran, the, away, dog, big. It has to be dog, doesn't it? 
the only noun in that sentence. And what is the dog doing, or what did it do? It ran. So that's the verb. And where did it run? Away. What kind of dog was it? It was big. And what goes here? We have an article adjective. There's only one thing left, and we need to remember to start with a capital letter. Now let's read our sentence and make sure it makes sense. The big dog ran away. And what do we need at the end? Period. Very good. Okay, let's work on our verb tense. One for present, happening now. Two for past. And three for future. Those always have will. Number one, I will call you tonight. Easy peasy. Number two, your mother called our house. Past tense ending. That was easy. My aunt calls me on my birthday. Calls. So that's present. He flies a plane. He is doing it right now. That is present. Birds flew. This already happened. They flew above the trees. Past. My father will fly home soon. Future tense. And all we have left to do is edit this sentence. Mom will shop for food on Saturday. Mom will shop for food on Saturday. So what do you need to do to that? See if you can do it by yourself. Okay, did you capitalize the first letter of the sentence? And did you capitalize the day of the week? And what kind of punctuation does it need at the end? It is just a period. Mom will shop for food on Saturday. Okay, good work. Now, there's another thing you can do in grammar today, and that is after you've done reading, in reading you're going to do this personification lesson and create your own character that you personify. And so an idea I had was you could take that invention, that idea, and make a story out of it. You could create a story where you have an adventure with your object that you personify. And in your grammar book on page 347, there's an outline here of the different parts of the story, which you guys know very well. We've done this a lot in class. They have main idea, but we just talked about the problem. So that really the main idea is the problem you want to create in a story. Your setting is when and where it happens. Your characters are who is in the story. Could be you and your whatever you personified here. Um, the plot is just what happens in the story, which is really just what is the problem and how did you solve it, which is your ending. And in your grammar packet, there's a page that looks like this where you can plan all that out for your story if you want to. And then on the next page is story paper where you can write your story and draw an illustration. So if you enjoy writing and you're excited about this personified character, that would be a really fun extension activity for you to work on over the next few days. And when you get it all done, send me a picture. I would love to read it. Okay. Enjoy.